Yo ho, hello! Evening, and welcome to another Tuesday Tea Time with me, Lewis, from Lewis Martin Vlogs, and my wife Kelly, from The Loving Step Monster. Hello! We are quite proud of the way we do things. We're not perfect, there's no manual, mm -mm. or no grading system, but we feel that we do an alright job. So we wanted to give you some tips on how we do things. And if it helps anyone out, real. Groovy. Kelly, mm -hmm. what would you say your first top tip is? Uh, my first top tip is that we established very basic rules for the house from day one. Um, and four and a half years later, we still abide by them. So, so our rules. Yeah, so our rules. So rules of the house, and we even have these on a placard by the front door. So the rules of the house are, we are always nice to one another. Mm -hmm. We don't talk, so obviously you don't shout at each other and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. We never hurt one another. We listen to one another and we work hard. So those are the rules of the house. Yeah. So um, they've always known that and uh, now that they're a little bit older, um, the two girls especially, we have also started to, because they're becoming very aware of who they are in the world and all the rest of it, mm. and they decide, they're starting to make their own decisions about things. So we've introduced a two question um, mindfulness trick really for them, isn't it? So they ask themselves, is this going to make me happy? And if the answer is yes, then they need to ask themselves the next question, which is, is this going to hurt anyone if they do what it is that they're thinking of doing? And if the answer is yes, then clearly they can't do it. And if it's no, then they've got the green light to go ahead. So it's those, it's very, very minimal. Yeah. But yeah, rules. And if they know that if they break the rules, consequences are incoming. So yeah. once, yeah. Uh, so I like the rules because they know where they stand with a lot of things around the house. If they start fighting with one another, which you guys, if you've got more than one, you'll understand that they do. So what would you say is a top tip, dear? I'd say number two, top tip for me. Um, I'd say... Um, never shouting at them unless you need to use what we call the loud voice. Yeah, or the big voice. Or the big voice. Mm -hmm. And the we big voice... Like yeah, the big voice is like absolute last resort and it's not shouting. Uh, the big voice is like a really incre big increase in volume of your normal voice. So it's not so shouting, shouting and bellowing. Well, there's not there's not aggressive. No, no. There's no, no aggressiveness no. in it. There's no screaming in it. There's no... No name calling or belittling. It's either. just literally like... It, it's the same facial expression. It's the same tone. It's just a higher volume. And that sounds really, really, really finicky. But actually, it has a big impact. And, it, and it's only able to like say their name, isn't it, to get their attention? So, yeah. It, and it's like Lou's saying, it's generally done like because we, we have like a three-stage process, which we'll, I'll talk about in a minute. But that that is like the nth, the nth degree. And yeah. It's incredibly rare, isn't it? I think we've lived here now in this hovel for <laughs> nearly five months, and I've used it twice. Mm. So that tells you really um, how often I use the big voice. But yeah. And you very rarely use it, do you? So. No. I mean, my voice is very big anyway. But. <laughs> But no, the big voice is just more volume it's not and it gets their attention. We, yeah, it's not something that we subscribe to, like treat like disciplining them through shouting at them because it doesn't work. Well, um, when you look at the arguing side and you're not and you're focusing not on arguing with them, and I mean when I say arguing, if they back chat or if they or if they argue back with you or if they question what you've asked them to do or if they if they defy what you ask them to do, then you repeat what you've asked or you 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 put down the law straight away and you stick to your calm uh, parenting voice rather than shouting and screaming and arguing and, and questioning and getting into this to and fro in. So what would you say the next tip is? Um, follow through with discipline and consequences. So because they don't want a consequence in the first place they're going to follow the rules, aren't they? And then that leads on to the fact that we then don't have to raise our voices and the house is generally a calmer place. So our consequences are never severe. Um, when they were very small, when we first started this um, custody changeover and all the rest of it, we did have what we used to call a quiet room where we used to put the children, didn't we, when they were yeah, really, we gotta... really naughty and they hadn't listened to us. Um, and they used to sit in there for as many minutes 
as they are age, old, so like the eight year old would sit in there for eight minutes. Well, when we, yeah, when we say quiet room, it's, it was it was more of a quiet step because the step was, it was between, between the, the bathroom the and, and the, the kitchen. Bathroom. Yeah, and it, so it's like a little alleyway. Yeah, and you could close both. So they weren't, yeah, so they weren't like they weren't locked in a room. No, <laughs> God no, no. But it's quite it was, important to establish the fact that you are. Um, these are the rules, um, or this is what I've asked you to do. If you haven't done it, I'm going to ask you again to do it. If they still don't do it, I'll then go and talk to them and I'll bring them to I and I said, look, I've asked you to do this. The sooner you get this done, the sooner we can go and do something fun. But if you don't do it this time around, I'm going to have to enforce a consequence on you. Um, and then unfortunately, if it gets to the third time, that is probably when like a loud voice is going to be raised and all the rest of it. Because in step two, we always say what the consequence is going to be. So um, just as, as a quick example, on nights when the kids aren't going back to school we'll have a film night and if they're messing about during the film night we'll say right okay the consequence of this is, if i have to come up here again is the fact that you're going to not have a film tomorrow and we'll go to bed as if it is a school night yet again and it shuts them up straight away because they know they know that we will put that in place because we have done it time and time and we're always on the same page with that so be very firm with your boundaries and don't pussyfoot around kids. You know, I see a lot of parents doing it and, and especially step parents. It's much kinder to tell them no right now than it is to try and be their best friend because you're not going to get anywhere in life, yeah. I don't think, with that attitude. And even as their dad, you know, it's hard for me to um, see them upset or cry and sad. And, and uh, all parents will understand, uh, all step parents will understand, all grandparents will understand, everybody that is. Uh, with the children, no one wants to see full time. A kid you cry. don't want to see the kid cry. But the thing you is, you don't want to have you've got to, your life either. No, but you've got to establish: are they crying because they're going through trauma mm. or an injury or an illness or because of something serious, or is it are they crying because they want to get their own way? Yes. And they're, they're, you've got to get that line. So what the tip is is mainly to focus as on the discipline side, but is also to look at the, the consequences. You have to know the line before you start to say, well, actually, these consequences need to stick in place. So it's quite hard for a parent or a step parent to do it. If one of them um, starts to fight and starts to bicker and hit a sibling or a friend, or if it's violence that they're doing, for example, they know they shouldn't be doing it. So that's quite clear cut. Mm. So the consequence you know now is in place, bang. If you don't stick to that consequence, they know that they can hit, scratch, whatever they were doing before, again. You need to have a measured reaction to the bad behaviour. So, for example, if they're messing about during film night, I'm not going to go up there and rip their bedroom apart, take all their toys away from them and se separate them from the rest of the family. Do you know what I mean? It has to be a measured response. Yeah. So that's why if they mess around during film time, we take the film time treat away from them. Yeah. If so go on then, Dad. What's your next tip? Next tip for me is... Always sit and talk to your children because for me I found when I was so busy and caught up in work and custody battles and all sorts of stuff I didn't um, always focus my time on sitting and talking to them and listening to them and we sometimes can forget as parents that we run this busy hectic life we we follow all those tips that we've just talked about and the discipline and, and things and with school hobbies, seeing family, etc. But what we need to sometimes do as a parent is sit down as a parent and listen. Mm. So not as a friend, in some ways it can be friendly. Mm. So you're almost a f almost on that friend level, but you know that you're the parent and you're the ear for that kid. Mm. That's your kid, that's your child. They should have trust in you. And that's why I started doing it, because I wanted to have them have trust in me. The girls, like we have what we call girly chats, you know, will disappear and, you know, they say things to me that you know, oh, well, you know, dad probably wouldn't understand this, or this boy's looking at me and blah, blah, blah at school. And, they're, they're, you know, they're quite shy about it because they're quite young, but they don't feel comfortable talking to dad. But then dad and um, Logan will have time together. So it's the, yeah. it's, it's that type of thing. It, it's it's a very fine line, like having being able to tread between being friendly enough that they feel confident enough to come and talk to you about things that are going on in their heads. I feel better as a dad knowing that I can sit down with all three of them at some point every single time I have them every day so from 
a Friday to the Wednesday, Wednesday. I'll always sit and say, how is school gone or how are you today? Yeah. And or, that question's a fairly open question, so anything can come out, whatever they want to talk about. Yeah, or we say, um, oh, what's made you happy today? Or we what's all, made you happy? Yeah, we do or the what's happy, made you sad? Yeah, we do the happy thank yous, what we call yeah. happy thank you. So we say, oh, what's made you happy? Oh, great. Uh, what's made you sad? Oh, okay, well, you know, why did it make you sad? That type of thing. So, and generally, they'll say um, that nothing's made them sad. They can also say that nothing's made them particularly happy either. So we go, was it a meh day? Meh? Yeah, meh. But the next tip then, what's your tip? <laughs> My next tip is... Try to not live a life that is in, so plugged in and hyper-stimulated all the time. So it's very easy to sit kids down in front of the TV because you're knackered from work or all the rest of it and you just want five minutes peace or you want to put them on the Xbox or leave them on the Sims all day and all the rest of it. But have much more of a uh, use your imagination type mm. household. So. Um, me growing up I was always taught to dream big and anything that I could use I had in my imagination was not a silly thing or something that you should be embarrassed about and that's something that we try and get the kids to you know keep going with I mean the oldest now is a little bit half in the baby camp where she still wants to play the little baby games and then she's half in the like more adult camp isn't she mm -hmm. where she's she's always listening with what you're doing and she wants to be around us more as opposed to her siblings Whereas the two little ones, they'll just run around the house and play silly games all day, won't they? Yeah. Um, so that's something that I really would impress onto you as well. And also we try to have, um, if we are on the Xbox, we try to do it as a family, don't we? So yeah. that we're all together and we've just got them learning to play Uno again, haven't we? Yep. Card game. So we try to do stuff together as a family. If we do craft stuff, it's not me doing stuff, crafty stuff with the kids dad's involved all the time we'll definitely try to reduce the plugged in lifestyle so when you go out to a restaurant don't take your ipods and your ipads and all that type of shit because no, you're out you as a family need, need no when you're in the car you don't need a dvd playing in the car you don't need it the kids like to sing along to music we like to have a bit of a bop and a laugh with them yeah, well. just take away as much media as you can because also it leads to very hyperactive I believe it leads to hyperactive children at night time as well because they're so overstimulated that they, they've got no peace of mind to go to bed with so and also if you're allowing your child to be online for example say around YouTube or all the rest of it you don't know what they're looking at so it's it's a bit like as much parental controls as you can set up things get through that they see and you don't know what has an impact on them emotionally or all the rest yeah. of it. Like what if they I, see these beautiful, but like even if they were watching something innocent like a makeup tutorial, right? They might think, well, this is what women look like all the time, the girls. Well, I don't really want them to grow up thinking that that's what women look like all the time. You, you know, it's those types of things. It's not real. Mm -hmm. Go dad. Um, my next step would be How best to put the kids to bed oh yeah because bedtime is a big issue for a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, especially if, if your kids are a little bit hyperactive and um, so what we do is because we've got three of them we stagger their bedtimes yeah so first of all I'd like to preface this with saying that it's incredibly rare that we ever have an issue at night time into we're quite lucky because what we do works. Very rare. What we yeah. do works. We didn't we, we didn't get any tips from anybody. We no. just did it the way we thought and it, it actually pays off. Mm -hmm. So what we do is fairly simple. The first thing we do is we do a routine before bed. That's the first part. Mm -hmm. So the routine involves washing, teeth, uh, any reading that they need to finish off. So it's finishing up the day. So they know that they're finishing up the day at that point and they're mm -hmm. getting ready then with their hygiene. Um, they're also getting their pajamas on at the same time, so it's not staggered pajamas. They all get their pajamas on at the same time, so they know that the house is bedtime now. It's not everyone's. Everyone's in one. If you've got one time. one child, obviously it's different because it's one kid. Yeah. But if you've got more than one, yeah, get them to do the same thing so they're mm -hmm. on the same ballpark. Even though we've got the ten-year-old, and I'll come on to it in a moment that stays up a bit longer, and we've got the six-year-old, they know that they're all getting their pajamas on. They don't argue about bedtime. But we get. We get ready for bed too, don't we? It's like the whole household. We can do all, not all the time, but we try. Yeah. But when the kids do it, it, the kids look at each other. So if mm. they see their brother or sister not getting ready for bed, they're going to argue or feel like they shouldn't have yeah. to. Yeah, like why is she not getting ready for? And it also yeah, exactly. like you don't want 
if you do have children going to bed at different times, you don't want the disruption later on. So, mm. like, you're going to say, aren't you, that, you know, the six-year-old will go to bed at seven, the ten-year-old, on a, and this is on a school night, on, um, and the ten-year-old will go to bed at eight. You don't want the eight-year-old going up to bed at quarter to eight, waking everyone up upstairs, doing her teeth and all the rest of it. So we always make sure that we've got yeah. them all prepared. The whole thing is done in one go, and then, mm -hmm. like Kai says, you know, the next stage will then be to stagger the bedtime. So if you've got one child, you choose whatever sensible time it is and then you stick to that time. Yeah. I'm, I know that there's probably a lot of questions and arguments when I'm saying these things because people all have lots of different experiences and I understand that. It's not straightforward, it's not simple. We're quite lucky with the fact that our process works well. Um, so if there's anything that you need more information on or what would like us to explain more on, please comment underneath and we can definitely explain on that because we'd love to talk more about what we do as parents to help other parents so the next stage would be then we're we are expecting the worst stage at this point now mm. so that's this is where they either get up out of bed they argue they scream cry there's tantrums there's problems they're not going to sleep they're not tired etc yeah a whole raft of them so if you're if you're a parent whose child immediately gets out of bed mm. and comes downstairs for attention or whatever it is or they can't yep. sleep you don't accept it, right? Yep. What we do, and I, I do, is I take a bit of a leaf out of uh, Super Nanny's book, and mm. I, I turn them around and I just walk them up. I don't say anything to them. No, we don't have and a then, conversation no, at all. There's no conversation, there's no dialogue. I get them into bed, and they may be crying at this point, or they may be silent at this point. There's no shouting, there's no manhandling. It's just yeah, we're talking pop. about if they've come down like for attention seeking, not if they've come down and they're saying that they're sick. Yeah, like yeah, genuinely yeah, yeah. sick, yeah. or they've had a nightmare. If they're or screaming, that's or for, if they're messing about, yeah. you know, then that's different. If it's messing about, this is yeah, messing about. Messing around. We, we turn them around. So consequence then, if they, if the consequence needs to be in place after that, because you've done it for an hour and a half, etc., then you use the naughty step if you want to. You can use a naughty step because they're in their pajamas. They're going to be a little bit you know, uncomfortable, there's no toys to play with, it's I mean, silent, it's dark. That, it depends what they're doing. To yeah, be honest, but depends on what they're doing. But if you use the naughty step, mm -hmm. uh, and you use it for your age appropriate, so if Logan went on there, he's six, so if a six-year-old went on there, he would be on there for six minutes. Mm -hmm. If the eight-year-old was on there, eight minutes, so on. And that's what we would do. Next tip then, Kelly. Um, kind of going along those lines, I would say... Do not pander to certain situations that your child is putting themselves in. So for example, we have a child that can make themselves ill at the drop of a hat because they either don't want to eat something or they don't they want to... They behave ill. They don't make they themselves They behave ill, yeah. No, no, no. They can. They have not been known to do it. And they they've get been sent they home from school. They can work themselves school. up. Yeah. So, they, know, they know that if they vomit at school, they have to have time off because they know the school's policy... Right. If they vomit, they have to have 24 hours off. 48. They, 48. They yeah. know that now, so... It's learned. Right. So you've got to be very careful when it comes to pandering to certain behaviour. And um, I call it pandering because if you allow it the first time... So say, for example, you've got a very anxious child who um, doesn't want to go to school and who makes themselves ill. Allow it to happen the first time and use that time to try and get down to the crux of why it's happening. Don't go sending them straight off to the doctors or the hospital or the rest of it. Or because McDonald's. You, or, yeah, and don't positively reinforce it by taking them to the cinema, buying them stuff or McDonald's or all that. Letting them play it. on computers all day. Exactly, right? So this, one of the children did it recently before Christmas to us. And um, so I dropped them off at school. Tiddlywink was um, very upset, very dramatic, very, very rare. So I, was, I said to the teacher in front of the child, I said, she is prone to doing this. Please do not pander to it. I guarantee you she will make herself sick, but she doesn't have a stomach bug. 20 minutes, and I walked home, 20 minutes later, I had a phone call from Louie that I had to go get her from school because I was off on holiday that week. Uh, got her from school, frog marched her home, she had a big smile on her face. Yeah. I said, are you sick? She said, no. So we had to have a conversation at that point as in what the ramifications were of her behavior. Um, and it's not a perfect science, but you can't pander to it. So now, when she came back to us and we've started the school routine again, um, this time it's a little bit different because I wasn't on holiday. I had to drop them at breakfast club, which is before school. 
um, she started to do the same thing. She wakes up perfectly fine. She's happy as Larry. As soon as I walk her through the school gate, the tears come. So I had a very, uh, I had like a 10 minute conversation with one of the caring assistants there. And I said, look, she's prone to doing this. There's absolutely nothing wrong physiologically because she's been absolutely fine all, all weekend. Ready, ready, ready. She was actually fine about 10 minutes ago. She started doing this as soon as she walked in the school gate. Um, psychologically, we can't determine that because we've not had anything in depth, have we, from counsellors and all the rest of it. But I said, physio physiologically, there's nothing wrong. She's doing this either for attention or she just doesn't want to be at school. Mm. So the, t care, the caring assistant said, right, no problem. I won't pander to it then because they would have done. They would have gone, oh, oh are you ill? And given her attention for it because that's essentially what she's after is attention. Um, so anyway, the day went on and I went and picked her up from care club again. And the t caring assistant said, yep, you were absolutely right. All the stages that you said that were going to happen. So I said, she's going to be quiet. Then she's going to start crying. You're going to get her to try and eat something. She'll refuse. Then she'll try and make herself sick. So the caring assistant said, that's exactly how it happened. But she said, I cut her off at the pass when it came to eating something. And I enforced the fact that we have rules at Care Club and that you have to eat something. Um, and she said, I basically ignored the behavior of the um, so-called sickness. And after 10 minutes, because she wasn't getting her way, lo and behold, she was absolutely fine. She started playing with her friends. She was happy as Larry. The next day, she tried to do the same thing, not to the same degree as she did on the Monday. I walked in and went same again to the caring assistant. So the caring assistant took care of her in the exact same way. Picked her up from, um, picked them up from after school club and apparently five minutes this time today. Forward on to Wednesday, happy as Larry going through the school gate. Ran into care club first before the other two. And I said, not a problem this morning. So now we have an understanding with care club. <coughs> anyway. come, come on then, dad, what's your, what's your last thing then? I think my last one would be um, dealing with children when out and about. Um, oh, okay. I think that's just, I think it's a big one because a lot of people take their kids out on trips or they take them to shops. And we've seen kids that go out to shops and they behave like devils. Oh, they yeah. are little no absolute monsters running around, not listening. And I saw manners, I saw they? people not re uh, not long ago um, who were really struggling with trying to um, get their child to come to them when they were leaving the shop. So they had the hands full of shopping bags, and this child was just running around, laughing, giggling, not aware of things, bumping into people, and they it would the child would not go to the parent. So, um, you know, I didn't stand around and watch. I just walked past the situation and I heard the parents swearing at the, at the kid. Mm. I mean, that's a different one anyway. I think don't, and in one tip, that's one for not, a pet peeve video. That's not, you don't swear at your children. No, nope. you don't swear at your children. Swear I know in some of our videos we've swore, but no, but we, we don't, don't maliciously swear at, swear at the kids or belittle them or call them names. Well, I think that's or when call you, them stupid. When you're I out, hear parents doing that as well. Yeah, yeah. When you kid, when don't you be hear, so stupid. Oh, it really winds me up. Don't be so stupid to a child. Why would you say that? Yeah. When you're out and about with a child. If you want them to come to you, you're going to have to put your shopping bags down. You're going to have to stop what you're doing. Mm. You're going to have to walk over to your child. You're going to have to get down on their level, eye contact wise. And you're gonna to have to say in a calm voice, if you don't stop running around, you are gonna go straight onto the naughty step when you get home, and I'm gonna put these treats back on the shelf. Yeah, the consequence for that. That's the consequence. Is, yeah. And if they continue to run around, you hold their hand, okay, you go and get them, you hold their hand, and you make them see you put their treat on the shelf. Yeah, we've done that a couple and of times. And then you go home and you follow it through. <laughs> even if they're crying, even if they're lovely, if something changes on the way home in the car, it does not, not matter. matter. They can't redeem it at that point. You've got to follow it through. So when you get home, they go straight on the naughty step. But you don't just put them on there. You don't just put them on there. You sit down to their eye level and you say to them, the reason why you're on the naughty step is because in the shop, X, y, Z, you didn't yeah. listen to me, X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. So when you're out and about, don't scream and shout, don't swear, right? Don't get into a shouting match across the aisles. You've got to go and sit and talk to your child. That means dropping what you're doing, getting down to their eye level in the middle of the bloody aisle and speaking to them about it. I think that's very important as well because parents are just so busy. Like it, It's going to be quicker for you to stop what you're doing for two minutes and, and address the situation than it is to stand at the shop door bellowing at your kid to try and get them to come to you. Like Take the time yeah. to deal with the situation properly, isn't it? So like for example, when we go out for food, when we go out to eat, 
um, and the kids are messing about and all the rest of it. I mean, they generally play before the food comes, but when the food comes, we always use the phrase, where are your manners? So if they're acting up and they're not sitting down properly, we say, where are your manners? You know, and we always say something like, oh, how would you feel like if the queen came to see you right now? You know, you've got, you've got like little things like that or, you know. Well, what we, what we wouldn't do is say something like, if you don't stop running around, I'm gonna call the police. Oh God, no. And the reason why, and the only reason why is because you're not going to follow that through. No. And if you do, you're in trouble. Yeah. You've got to say something. Or, yeah, or like if I'm on my own with the children, I never say, you just wait till your dad comes home. No. I would never say that. No. And I would never say. Because that diminishes her as a parent. It diminishes me, and but if it I also was makes say him it, out to be the, the bad guy. Yeah, if it I makes, was, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't say it either. No. Because you then never it do diminishes that. me. You have to handle the you're issue. You're both equal. Yeah, you have to handle the issue straight away. Yeah. Definitely. Your last one then, Kelly. My last one, and it might seem a bit weird, but, but it's kind of a protection mechanism, is that um, never have secrets with your children. Always, you can have surprises. So for example, like, oh, we've, you know, we're, giving, we're buying this for dad for Christmas, but it's a surprise. But never have the, I believe that you should never have the term secrets with your children. Don't say anything because it's a secret. The reason why I'm saying that as a protection mechanism is because, you know, obviously if someone's doing something untoward around your child, they would generally always say, it's between you and me, it's a secret. Or if like two kids are doing something that they should be doing, don't tell anyone because it's a secret, it's that type of thing. So I, I would highly suggest unto you, I don't know how you feel about that, but we've never had that issue. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's a valid point. I think, I think, um... We don't, we I went don't to, have that here though, do we? No, I think, um, I haven't really witnessed much of it, but I know that, uh, I've heard it talked about where parents have um, asked their kids to keep secrets and um, use them as mouthpieces and things like that. Mm. Try not to use them as mouthpieces, try not to keep them as, use them as a secret folder, you know, to unload and offload on them your secrets and your problems. Yeah, they're not mini counsellors. <laughs> they're, they're not mini counsellors, they're not people that can absorb what your secrets are and problems are and you most definitely should not say to them, don't tell anybody else, etc. Mm. Because then you're teaching them the wrong things to be doing yeah. and also it's burdening them. Psychologically for a child to have that burden is not fair and it can harm no. them. No, so, so you know, if you're having just... a shitty day, you're having the shitty day. You don't need to pass that off to your kid. For our tips today, you know, I hope some of them have helped, I hope some of them make sense. I know it's not, it's just tips from us. It's not advice, we're not counsellors or parenting guidance uh, officials. Uh, this is not, a, this is a kind of a disclaimer in some way. But do what you best you can, just if what, you take anything from us, um, you know, just take it step by step. And I think if you want to take any tips from us, let us know how it's gone. If you find that you want to use any of our tips, let us know. Um, give us some feedback. Or if you use them and they don't work. Or if they use, if you use them and they're just not working as well, because it would be interesting to see what happens down, down that line. We obviously, for what we said, is, is working for us, and lot, you know it would be interesting to see what if what we do doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But also, if you've got any other questions, please let us know because yeah, this, I mean, this is our life. Yeah. This, this is who we are. This is what we do, and you know we analyze a lot. Uh, we reflect a lot on things so yeah we talk together about things as well what, what has worked what hasn't worked you know yeah. we we plan out you know how we're going to handle things with the rest of it so, so yeah, if you've got any questions on anything else let us know because i'm pretty sure we can discuss with you about it we can talk to you offer our tips and our viewpoints and that's all this is it's our viewpoint it's our tips it's what we think and um we'll put it there and Alright guys, so thank you for watching again. Thanks um, for tuning in. Yeah, it was a really interesting one. Yeah. See you next Tuesday. Bye.